Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this edition of Webinar Wednesday. Um, we're starting today this uh, What's New in SolidWorks 2019 series. Um, I'm David Lafive. I'm the PDM Product Manager uh, at Hawkridge Systems. And obviously, today we will be uh, talking about SolidWorks PDM. Surprise. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's give your, you guys a bit of a summary of this session. Uh, first off, um, I'm just going to close this. First off, we're going to talk about the uh, system requirements changes. So basically, operating system, SQL, uh, what what to look for when uh, you upgrade to 2019, and what's coming as a end of life. And then we will follow with uh, the list of announcements uh, that 2019 offers. Um, there's not a big um, shining feature this year, like uh, in 2018 with the branch and merge or the revision table integration. Uh, but there's a lot of enhancement, a lot of things that will um, accelerate your productivity, something like web to redesign uh, that gives uh, gives you guys the opportunity of uh, accessing your vault from anywhere but the whole redesign is nice uh, it's easier to get file in get get file out so uh, get third party in your vault might be easier with this one uh, conditional notifications uh, in the workflow file file shortcut menu for uh, bill material for where use as well as um, the contains tab then a couple of changes and new permissions. There's uh, the conversion uh, task that's got some uh, options for DXF and DWG. We're going to look at that. And then some integration with inspection and composer to uh, yeah to complete more the uh, whole SOLIDWORKS ecosystem. All right. So without further ado, let's start with our uh, web to redesign uh, with our system requirement change. Actually, so there's four things to look for in uh, those requirement changes. On the first table on the top, you can see that uh, Windows 8.1 will not be supported in 2019. Uh, this is, doesn't come as a surprise. Uh, so Windows already announced, uh, being a this year in 2018, that they were stopping the mainstream support for Windows 8. Point one, so SOLIDWORKS is basically retiring uh, that operating system in 2019. The other one on the lower table is Windows Server 2012. This one in SOLIDWORKS 2019 uh, will be retired as well. Um, if you look on the right side, I, I also put what's announced uh, end of life for 2019 SP5. So the uh, Windows Server 2012 R2 by SP5 will be retired. So it, it'll be fine during 2019 until SP5. And that's the same thing for a SQL 2012 will be retiring or the support will end for um, SQL 2012. So that's enough for the bad news. Um, let's just jump into the announcement right away. Um, the the big one I think is the web to redesign. So um, there's a new look. Um, so they, they redid the interface. Um, it's pretty slick. Uh, you can now drag and drop file, upload folders, uh, download file with reference. So basically, they went away from the one, one, one download or one upload file per file. You can now do bulk upload, download, and that's a big change. So let's um, let's take a look actually. So this is my um, this is my interface, my login window for uh, for my web too. Just gonna log in and we'll take a look at that uh, that actual new look. So the first thing I saw when I went in that uh, new uh, web too is how fast, how snappy it is to browse in there. So if you look at um, if you look at the browsing through folders, folder with files, pretty fast. Uh, the other thing that I like is the download here. So the download now contains the download or download with references. So if I click on download with references, it will give me an idea of what I'm downloading. It's got um, some um, some options for getting the latest, getting what's referenced. Uh, you can include the drawing, which will add to the list of your download, and you can download the whole thing, uh, which is pretty nice. Uh, the other thing here is um, is the drag and drop. So as you can see, I can just drag and drop a file, or if I go 
with a folder, I can grab the whole folder and bring it in. So that's nice for bringing folder uh, in and out uh, of, of web two, it's pretty fast. I'm not gonna drop that in because it's gonna take a bit of time. We are a bit short on time. The last thing I'm gonna show on the web two here is the search. I, I think it's pretty nice, pretty convenient. You just have your search bar here. You can search current folder. You can search all folders. I'm gonna, just gonna put gear. Uh, and it searched pretty fast to uh, my vault. So I really like that uh, new interface. I'm sure you guys uh, will be able to take advantage of, uh, of that. All right, whoops. More enhancement, uh, conditional notification, file shortcut menu, and advanced conversion option for DXF TWG. So conditional notification before, uh, before 2019, uh, you were a bit stuck uh, with uh, folder, um, you know, the, the choices for um, sending notification or tailoring the notification to a certain user or a certain type of file was, uh, was limited. Now with the conditional notification, you can leverage your metadata. So you can leverage, uh, you can le leverage your variable uh, to say I need to, to put only the approved by or something like that. You can also do the file path just like you would do in, uh, in the workflow for a directing file. You can uh, have a certain file path. You can have a certain extension um, for notification. So that's quite nice. Uh, the file shortcut menu, um, before 2019, you you didn't have any um, file option in the BOM and the contains and the where use. Now, if you right click on a file, you basically have uh, those options, check out, check in, those kind of things right from uh, that window. And then the advanced uh, conversion option for the XF DWG uh, applies for uh, sheet metal flat pattern. So you have uh, some conversion option and uh, we can actually go look up we can go look at that right away. So for the conditional notification, if I'm in my workflow, you can see uh, on the notification tab, they added this add conditional notification here. Before you only add the folder notification, now you have a conditional uh, notification. So if I go in there to set up a notification, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you have your recipient which uh, you can just give groups or user, you have to put recipients in there. And then the notifi notification condition looks like the transition uh, condition. So basically you have your variables or you have some predefined uh, file path or revision category, those kind of things. Um, so if I look at uh, approved by, I can say text contain David L or something like that and that will, uh, send notification only if it satisfied this condition. Uh, another example that I created here is if I wanna do for just a specific uh, file extension. So if I just wanna be notified when my drawings are going through, let's say my submit for approval, I can use my file path and use something like uh, value like this. Um, and that will that will do it. So that's pretty nice, uh, give you more control on your notifications. Uh, right there. So uh, the other thing that we talked about is the convert task. So in the convert task here, um, under conversion setting, if you choose DXF or DWG, you now have under conversion options, you have uh, more options. <laughs> so uh, you can now for sheet metal flat pattern, you can now export or convert your geometry, your uh, bend line sketches, bounding box. This is all stuff that you can uh, you can select here. So it is for DXF as well as DWG here. If I look at um, if I look at my vault here and look at my build material, uh, as I was saying, now I can right click and I can check out. Same thing for my contains. I can, before that you could only browse to or browse to it in the new window, get to the file and then do the operation. This will save a lot of time because now you can say, okay, I, I need to check out this one or that one or do a file operation right from this window. Uh, that's, that's pretty neat. Okay, let's get back to our presentation here. More enhancements. So let's talk about permissions. Uh, there's been uh, a bit of work done on comments. 
So uh, you can now edit the history comment. So if you're not happy with the comment you left, uh, or if it's wrong, you can edit it. Uh, you can also, as an admin, uh, decide if mandatory comments, um, if the comments are mandatory uh, per state. Or, uh, or actually per transition. So before that, it was a global setting. It's uh, whether it's either uh, permitted, uh, you need to put a comment or not. Now you can decide which uh, transition would require something like that. Uh, there's also something that's been done about the um, selecting by default um, if the drawing will go with uh, the rest of the files when you do a transition. So if you transition a set of files, you can say I want by default my drawing to go with them uh, to be selected or by default not to be selected. Uh, and finally, the mix authentication is a, is a big one. So uh, again, it tackles something that was uh, just the um, uh, a global settings where you had to choose if you were going to do a, uh, an integration with your uh, Active Directory or if you were going to do PDM user. Now you can do both, uh, so you can have the mixed the mix of uh, both of them. So let's go back to our admin tool. Uh, I'm going to look at the mandatory comments. So what they did, what what's been done is uh, basically this line here has been added in the transition must enter state change comment. So I didn't put it in the submit for approval, and I did put it in the no approval required, for example, here. The other thing is the settings. So uh, the setting of the drawing node that we can look. So under group or user, you can go under settings, and under reference dialog here, you have this line that's been added. Do not select references that are defined drawing node. So basically it's a, it's a negative. So if you check it, it won't select the drawing uh, when you do the transition. And if you uncheck it, it will select all the drawings by default. So that's, that's a default uh, setting. And finally, I was talking about the mix, um, the mix authentication. So if you create a new user, you can see that you have new uh, buttons here. So you can list your Windows user, create a new Windows user, or you can just uh, do PM user and you can do a combination of, of those. So you have more options here for creating users. If I go look at uh, my vault here and I look at my comments, uh, if I go in history and look at the comments that I left on here, you can see that I can now edit, let's say done, I can update my comment. And it will basically um, it will basically update the, that comment in um, in in here. So that's nice. I can update the comments I leave. Uh, the other thing that I was showing is um, let's go in those uh, let's go let's go in those CAD files here. If I take this top level assembly, it changed the state for uh, submit for approval. You can see that my drawings are not selected by default because I checked that box. So there, there, there they are. And if I change that setting, um, I can actually just go do it quickly, change that setting in the reference dialog. And now, um, and now I should just by default um, in the change state, I'm going to do, do no approval required. It actually grabs all my drawings by default. They're all selected. And then if I click OK, it won't let me go through because I didn't put a comment because I said it was mandatory for no approval required versus if I want to uh, submit for approval that was required, I can leave it without comment and it will go through. So that's pretty neat. Um, um, here for those. Um, uh, those permission changes. Let's keep going. PDM integration. So we have two new integrations, um, SOWRX Inspection and SOWRX uh, Composer. So let's start with Composer. So I have it uh, over here. So um, you now have the add-in inside of Composer. So if I open my file here uh, that I have in my vault, I basically have all my vault functionality now in that little new tab, that SOLIDWORKS PDM tab. So I can do my check-in from here. Um, I can 
I can show the card. I can uh, change my state, submit for approval. I can do all that stuff that I would be doing in Windows Explorer, but now I can do it inside of Composer. Pretty convenient. Um, same thing for inspection here. So with inspection, um, I have um, I have integration. Well, I have the add-in, the Solar Expedia add-in here, the check-in, uh, check out all that that good stuff, but I also have good integration with the uh, the properties in, in uh, inspection. So if you look here, I can show the card. Um, when you when you install the default, let's say the default um, installation of SOLIDWORKS, it comes actually with some predefined cards. So if I look at those predefined cards, there's now one for uh, Composer, but also inspection here. And they come with those six um, six um, box or edit box where the variables are already uh, populated. So it basically use a block called SWIPRJ property to pull the, um, the properties from the extension uh, IXPRG, which is the extension for the project file in, uh, in inspection. So what it does is if I look at my data card here, I have by default those six um, those six properties defined. And if I decide that I'm gonna, you know, I'm, I'm just going at it right now, just putting a new document name in there. Okay, saving this. If I look at my card, I have this right on my data card. So it's it's the same thing with the custom property uh, integration that you know previously for, with SOLIDWORKS. It, it will basically be a push and pull uh, two-way conversation, but it's really nice to get uh, this done inside of inspection and having uh, showing um, on your data card. So that's for the uh, the general um, properties here are the project properties. There's also the custom properties in um, in inspection. So you see I have the material here that tests MA that is nowhere uh, on this card. So if I put, let's say, an edit box here and I decide to put uh, my material, um, there's another block that's been uh, created. Let's just go fast track this material. There's another block that's been created that I can add to those uh, attributes. So the block is named SWI custom property. Um, so I would have to put it in here, SWI custom property, just like this. And I'm just gonna put uh, material. And again, the extension would be for my IXPRG. So if I do that, and I have my material here, say my data card, then uh, the material here um, that I have should be, uh, uh, once I save my file, now should be integrated with my data card and will be showing on my data card. So you can not only integrate the project property, those six that are kind of by default, but any uh, properties that you have more custom in here, you can also integrate them with, uh, with your PDM. Okay, so that's pretty much what I had for you guys for uh, SOLIDWORKS PDM. Uh, like I said, it's uh, it's a lot of little enhancement, lots of good stuff. There's also performance uh, improvement in PDM, so large assembly and uh, and browsing will be uh, handled faster and will be better. So um, don't hesitate to test it. Don't hesitate to uh, ask us question um, after the webinar. I'll stay a little bit. And uh, thank you for attending. Uh, don't miss out. We keep going with this series of what's new in SOLIDWORKS 2019. We have a simulation flow in plastic coming up on October 10th. And that, uh, thanks for your time and uh, have a great Wednesday.